Hi, everyone. Today, I want to talk about two very simple things that you can do to give yourself a better chance of having Etsy find your listings and show them on the first page and rank them well, because Etsy is telling us what they want. We just have to go in and look for it and pay attention to what they're showing people. So I'm going to go into Etsy's homepage and show you the first thing. And then we'll talk about the second thing a little farther along. This is not a hard concept, but I think a lot of people get so involved in tips and tricks that you just don't look to see what Etsy is telling us because they're telling us right there what they want. So let's go into Etsy and see. The first thing to do is to pay attention to what they're actually showing on the homepage to someone who has never logged into Etsy. So go into an incognito browser. This doesn't have to be something where you're super secret and just, you know, just open an incognito browser where you're not signed in and just see what Etsy's showing you. And I'll tell you that I was doing this this morning. This is the third different version of the homepage that I've seen in incognito browsers in the last five minutes. So the first thing to do is just to make sure that you're actually giving Etsy the keywords to match the listings that it's putting on the first first page of search. And this kind of goes with the relevance check video. I'll put that at the end of this one, but you need to make sure that what you're using for keywords is what Etsy thinks your listing is and what Etsy thinks that keyword is about. So I'm just going to go into pressed flowers, pressed flower gifts. Okay. So let's click on pressed flower gifts and we're going to see what keyword comes up. So this is actually the same keyword. Technically you don't need an exact word order match to be in Etsy search anymore. They're just looking for the keywords, but if you have that exact word order match, it can help you give a little edge up, you might be able to get higher placement with that word order match. So just keep that in mind, but just look and see what kind of stuff is on here. So let's say that you have pressed flower gifts and you're looking on this page and there's absolutely nothing like what you make on this first page. That's a good indication that Etsy is not thinking that your product is a good pressed flower gift, right? So let's say that you have actual pressed flowers, but they're not made into anything. And you're trying to put, you know, like this could be a gift. And yeah, anything could be a gift. If you have actual pressed flowers and they're not made into something, Etsy's not going to put that on this page, it looks like, because it looks like it's just pulling things that are flowers that are made into things. That's the first thing to pay attention to. Now, I want to go back to the home page. So let's click on gifts for kids because they were giving me a different word order. Yeah, see, instead of gifts for kids, it says child gifts. So now the keyword has changed. Like I said, the keyword match isn't that important. What you want to look at is what does Etsy think a child gift is? Okay, so we're going to look at this first. And because Etsy has chosen this keyword and is showing things in order. This is Etsy's decision about what keyword people should be looking for when they're looking for gifts for kids and what they think child gifts are. So you need to think about both things. Look at, see what Etsy, what is Etsy saying? This is a gift for a child. And is it a lot of, you know, I mean, if, if the things that you sell are not on this page, then you might not be chosen to be on this page by Etsy because they're using different ranking factors. And part of that is relevance. And it's what Etsy thinks is relevant. It's not what you you think is relevant. So just think about that when you're looking at keywords. I'm going to put gift for child in here. I can type it in and we're going to see what actually comes up because it's going to be different. Okay. So when I type in gift for child, which is what the link came to, or like it, it said that on the link, it's different stuff. See, I mean, I see, I see this, I see the puzzles are still here. There's some books. It's not the same stuff. So what we think is a gift for a child is not necessarily what Etsy thinks is a child gift. And if you looked to see what Etsy thinks is the child gift based on the homepage and what they're drawing people to, then you might be able to target your keywords a little bit better and your products a little bit better for that thing. So let's say that you do sell a lot of wood puzzles. Okay. You might not have gift for child in there. I think I should should think you probably would, but that's something to pay attention to because if Etsy thinks that these wood puzzles are something that actually is a good gift for a child, then you should be using that keyword in there in a few different forms. So gift for kids, child gift, like Etsy had it up there. Just put that in there to validate to Etsy that, yeah, that's what this is. And I think it's a good thing. It's a good fit for that keyword. You can also look for all of these, you know, I mean, so these are different. This is child daughter. So that could be like an older daughter, child caregiver. That's a nanny that's a babysitter. That's not a child, child psychologist. So just pay attention to what goes with that. Because if you're putting gift for child, that's different than child gift. Let's go back to the child gift. And this is going to be a different page too, because it's not the same results as the page that Etsy sends you to. So always look at the page that Etsy sends you to, and then compare it to the other ones. And a lot of these look like they're still coming up in the results. This is per very similar to Etsy's choice of what child gift should be. Pay attention to everything. Just go in and do the reality check for 
yourself. Okay, let's go back here. The other thing that I was interested in, now to check this out, let's go into cozy clothing. So we go over here and this says winter clothing. So now cozy clothing has become winter clothing, you know, but that's a semantic relationship. And this is what Etsy thinks cozy clothing is, is winter clothing. All right. So we just, that's put that in your mind. But then we also want to look at the prices because in the last couple of years, Etsy has mentioned several times that pricing is a ranking factor. They haven't said whether it's high or low, but a couple of years ago, they did say that they're going to start putting higher priced items in search results on the first page to try to get people to spend more. Obviously, I mean, look at this. This is what, this is the Etsy choice page. So this is, comes directly from Etsy browse. This is not something that I typed in. And Etsy is choosing to put a $267 sweater at the very top. So you can't say, oh, they're only showing cheap stuff. They're showing things that are more expensive. They're showing things that are medium. They're showing things that are less expensive. So there's a good range. And depending on what you're selling, you need to go in and look at this because if everything they're selling is cheap, then they might be using the cheapest in that category because they know that people tend to buy on the cheap side. But if they're having a pretty good selection of prices, and that's kind of what I've been seeing is that they're putting different price points in the first page, then it gives people an opportunity to buy at different price points. This is a very basic concept, okay? It's not something new. It's the tiered pricing strategy. You have low, medium, high. People tend to buy medium. This is a very old thing. And there's there has been people who study that. You don't have to study this. When I did wedding cakes, wedding photographers were very good at this. And I'm taking you over now. This is a photographer who I used to work with, and this is his pricing page. And this is very, very common in the wedding industry because because you know that brides don't want to spend the most, they're budget conscious, but they don't want to spend the least. And you want to get them right in that middle range somewhere. So his basic package, and I'm not even going to look at what's in this package. The basic package is $2,200, but it has the word basic in there. All right. People usually say, I don't want basic. That's, that's low. Semi-complete. Okay. That's a little more expensive, but it's only semi-complete. Who would want to buy semi-complete? That means you're missing something. Okay. This is a very smart marketing tactic to call this semi-complete. Complete package. That's the complete package. My guess would be that most people buy the complete package because one step above that is the total package. That's $4,000. It's $1,000 more than the complete package. What this does is this anchors the price. There's price anchoring. There's all kinds of theories about this. You don't need to worry about that. Just have low, medium, high. Most people buy in the medium range. And it looks to me like Etsy is showing things across the spectrum and you need to have low, medium, high to give to Etsy to have an opportunity to be shown in all those places. So anyway, just keep that in mind and make sure that you have some kind of a tiered pricing strategy in place so that you have things that people can buy at each price point, but the majority will go with the middle. So just be aware that Etsy is telling us and they are showing us right there on the page what they want and what they want to rank and what they want people to buy because they know what people buy when they search for certain terms and they're going to show it to you right there. But they also want to nudge people to spend a little bit more. So you might want to pay attention to what the price range that they're showing in your category is and just really go in and don't worry about trying to trick the search engine. Go and look to see what the search engine is doing and then make sure that you're following that to give the search engine a little more information about your own listings and that will work better in the end. So give this video a thumbs up, post any questions that you have in the comments and I will talk to you later.